Do you love the deep ocean? Sorry, that was... rude. I know, it's a big question. I mean, you as a human being live on land, probably. The deep ocean feels far away. And unless you're very lucky or extremely wealthy, you'll likely never visit. Water pressure equal to the weight of 270 elephants pushing in from all sides of your body makes taking a safari in the deep sea more complicated. Not to mention, some of the things that live down there can be pretty spooky looking. So you may think that compared to all the other incredible environments to love out there, the deep sea is a place you just don't have feelings for. But I have good news. Even if you never go there, even if you are terrified of the strange creatures that live down in the dark, whether you know it or not, you do love the deep ocean. And today, we're going to prove it. The first reason you love the deep sea is that you love the animals that live there. Now, I know how that sounds. We're used to thinking of deep sea creatures as all toothy and covered in tentacles. And maybe you do love those animals. If so, you have good taste. But even if the creepier critters aren't your cup of tea, there are deep sea animals that you love too. Let me explain. We tend to think of the deep sea as the very bottom of the ocean. Scavengers crawling over whale bones, smoking towers covered in tube worms, and so on. But to scientists, the definition of the deep sea is a lot broader than that. Or, well, taller. It usually includes all parts of the ocean deeper than 200 meters. How short a distance is that? If you could get out of a boat and walk straight down, you would make it to the deep ocean in under three minutes. That 200 meter depth was chosen as the edge of the deep sea because only about 1% of light from the sun makes it down that far, which means that plants are pretty much out of the question. When you compare those 200 meters to how deep the ocean can get, though, you'll see that what we call the deep ocean is mostly just the ocean. Only the critters in the very top crust aren't part of the deep sea club. That means that a lot of the most widely loved animals in the world spend a lot of their lives in the deep ocean. Let's do a roll call using the most accurate way to judge something's popularity, Instagram. This is a list of the most Instagrammed ocean animals of 2020. And you might not realize it, but this list is chock full of denizens of the deep. Over a quarter of the 50 species on this list either live in the deep sea or go there to find food. Those charismatic creatures include fan favorites like green sea turtles, tuna, king and emperor penguins, beluga whales, narwhals, and even the great white shark. Without the deep sea, these ocean influencers couldn't survive. So if you love any of them, you love the deep ocean. Now, you could argue that most of these animals are deep sea part-timers, and so don't count as creatures from the deep that you love. Surely, any creature that spends all of its time in the deep ocean would be horrifying, right? Well, consider this counter-argument. It's like some little kid dropped their toy. <laughs> <laughs> Trash. Oh, my oh, He's okay. awesome, though. He so is awesome. You can deny that that stubby squid is the cutest thing you've ever seen. But I know. Of course, you don't just love the deep ocean because it's full of cute animals. You also love it because it helps keep you alive. One of the ways it does that is very direct. Food. The most commonly caught fish eaten directly by humans is this one, the Alaska Pollock or Gaddis chalcogrammus. You might never have seen it alive before, but it's hard to exaggerate just how dominant this animal is in seafood. If you have ever had fish sticks, a fish sandwich, or fish and chips, the odds are pretty good that they came from this fish caught in this area off the coast of Alaska. And as you might have guessed, Alaska Pollock is usually caught in the deep ocean. So if you like your seafood fried and battered, you can thank the deep sea for your meal. But the deep ocean is also working to keep you alive in a less obvious way. Medicine. This is a deep sea sponge. While better known for their uses in cleaning or living in pineapples, sponges are some of a wide range of deep ocean animals that can have potentially life-saving chemicals inside their bodies. The exact reasons why are a topic for another video, 
But the point is that chemicals from deep sea creatures have been found to be promising tools for fighting disease, including cancers. So as much as horror stories make it feel like the deep ocean wants to kill you, it's actually doing a lot of important work to keep you and the people you care about alive. And speaking of keeping you alive, we need to talk about one more thing that the deep ocean has been saving you from. That pesky greenhouse gas? Carbon dioxide. You see, the ocean holds a lot more carbon than the atmosphere. 50 times more. And for the past 200 years, as humanity has been launching CO2 into the sky, the ocean, like the loving system it is, has come to our rescue by sucking up a full third of what we let out. A lot of that carbon dissolves into the ocean and is taken into deep water by currents, keeping it out of the air and out of your hair for thousands of years. But the deep ocean also has a way of taking care of carbon more permanently. Some CO2 gets absorbed by living things at the ocean surface as they grow. When those living things die, they sink into the deep ocean as little white specks called marine snow. Plenty of that marine snow gets eaten by animals, but some of it makes it all the way to the seabed and gets locked away, keeping CO2 out of the atmosphere. This way that the deep ocean shows you its love is called the biological pump, and without it, our atmosphere would now have twice the amount of planet-heating carbon that it already does. So now do you see? The deep ocean has been working every day to keep you happy and healthy. It's been there for you this whole time, keeping you safe, supporting you, and gifting you your favorite animals, even if you were too busy chasing after other environments to notice. So if you really look inside and come to terms with your own feelings, I know you will find that you truly love the deep ocean back. And that is great news. Because your relationship with the deep ocean is more important now than ever before. All those reasons we went through, your favorite animals, food and medicine, regulating Earth's climate, those gifts are all under pressure. No pun intended. The deep sea may seem like a place that's big, distant, and eternal, but like any other environment, human decisions can have big impacts, good and bad. Plastic pollution and future deep sea mining can impact your favorite deep ocean animals, while too many greenhouse gas emissions can raise the deep sea's heat and acidity, lowering its ability to keep your climate comfortable. To make sure the deep sea stays a place you love, the decisions we make for how to use and protect it have to be based on good science. And that is why the Deep Ocean Stewardship Initiative is here. DOSI is a network of the world's top deep ocean experts working together to help policymakers design good rules for the deep sea. And to do that, we also want to share deep sea science with everyone. Because all the research in the world can't help us make big choices if people don't love the deep ocean. So it's a good thing that whether you knew it before or not, you already do. Thanks for watching, and we hope you'll join us as we cover more deep ocean science on our channel. If you want to dive into the deep end, we've got a whole series of webinars by experts that take a more classroom-style approach to these topics and more. If you want to follow along with our work, you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Deep Stewardship. So let us know there or in the comments if you have deep ocean questions. Thanks again. We'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.